right. Well, good morning, everyone. <clears throat> this is a very uh, exciting day. You have known uh, since uh, Tuesday, but it's still incredibly exciting to be able to uh, officially uh, introduce our new uh, football head coach, um, Mr. Brent Key, um, as, as the head coach of, uh, of, of our football team. I am incredibly excited. I, for, for a whole number of reasons, I, I have gotten to know our coach over the last uh, few months. I have been so impressed, not just by by the results, but by by his style, by his personality, by his care and his care of, of our student athletes, of our program. Um, it's been just absolutely fantastic. So I'm 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 very, very excited about about the outcome. And I'll let in a minute our athletic director to give us a little bit more detail. But I also uh, want to thank uh, Jay, um, our athletic director, for uh, the, the time, the care that he has invested in this search. He took this very seriously. I realized I did not give you, Jay, much time uh, when, when we brought you to Georgia Tech and you have used all that time to do a thorough analysis of the program, of what it is that we need to conduct a thorough national search and to look at exactly who is the right person to lead this next new chapter of uh, Georgia Tech. And you uh, concluded that Brent Key is the right person for that chapter. And I want to thank you for the incredible amount of, of time that you have uh, devoted. I want to thank Danielle and Harper, coach's daughter. She is going to be, I, I have the sense that she's going to be an awesome yellow jacket. Yes. I see, I see it, I see it in you. But thank you. I know, I know this uh, new adventure drags you into uh, an interesting phase of your lives, and, and I appreciate and I appreciate everything that, that you do for this for this place. And I am also uh, grateful for the coaches, uh, all their family members, and, and friends who are um, uh, with us uh, today. I, I also want to thank all the fans and, and alumni who were there for us <clears throat> all the way. And these are the true fans and alumni and donors who support Georgia Tech in good times and in bad times. And when we uh, brought in uh, Jay and, and, and Coach Key took over on an interim basis, one of the first things that, uh, that our new athletic director did was to launch a competitive drive initiative was to call on the entire community to say, let's all get together and provide the resources that we need to support this program to make sure it's successful. And our community responded. So I am delighted that we, we announced a goal to raise two and a half million dollars for student athlete uh, scholarships that were going to be matched with funds from the Georgia Tech Foundation. And I'm happy to announce that we have met that goal. And uh, it's even a happier fact that the final contribution that helped us get through that milestone uh, came from our new head coach, Brent Key himself and his family. And for that, I, I thank you, sir. Thank you. So, <clears throat> so um, obviously, uh, one of the, of the many qualities that um, that the coach key has is that he gets this place he was a student here he started his uh, his career in intercollegiate athletics here he cares deeply about this place and what it means he cares deeply about the program and he cares deeply about our student athletes he knows uh, how hard it is to compete at this level I always say it is hard enough to just be a student at Georgia Tech and to get a degree from one of the most academically competitive uh, institutions in the nation. And it would be equally challenging for most human beings would not be able to compete athletically at this level in the ACC conference as well. Now think about doing those two things at once. It's a very small universe of people who can accomplish that and I'm incredibly proud of them. And we have a coach who gets how uh, special it is for our student athletes who are able to, to do that. So I know that um, <clears throat> I have learned over the past few months <laughs> that this uh, gentleman is uh, slightly competitive. Uh, 
uh, he likes to win um, more than pretty much anybody I've, uh, I've worked with, but even more uh, passionate than he is about winning is about making student athletes successful. So um, I just want to let you know, um, Brent, that we're incredibly excited about this new chapter and that as much as, of course, you're now our leader, we're all behind you. We're here to root for you and to do everything that we can uh, to make you and our amazing student athletes successful. So with that, uh, let me turn things over to our athletic director, Jay Bad. Thanks again, Jay, for, for this incredible uh, work you've done. Yes, sir. Well, good morning. Uh, it is indeed a great day for Georgia Tech. Um, I'd like to start with a thank you to President Cabrera, uh, Executive Deputy Athletic Director John Palumbo, uh, many members of our athletic staff, uh, university administration, um, as well as alums Mark Teixeira and Mike Anderson for their help throughout the search. Um, I, want, I want to call special attention uh, to Dr. Cabrera and, and a, a special thank you um, to you for all your support uh, through the last several weeks through this search. Um, it, it is very clear to me just how important this hire uh, as well as our long-term athletic success is to you. It's truly a, um, a testament to just how committed you are uh, to Georgia Tech Athletics. I um, also want to thank our uh, GTAA board members uh, as well as our USG Board of Regents. I see uh, some of you here today. Thank you for your support throughout this process. Um, you can truly, truly important uh, as we go forward. I um, also want to congratulate Danielle and Harper and then welcome uh, Coach your family as well as high school coaches that are here to support you today. Uh, it, it truly is a family affair and uh, this is a, a lifestyle, not a job that I think we're all happy to have and uh, a privilege to be a part of. So congratulations to you. Um, as I mentioned in my uh, opening uh, opportunity to visit with everyone. My uh, my first job after uh, after finding the coffee was to to watch, listen, and learn. Right, <coughs> watch, listen, and learn about what makes this place so special. But also was to watch, listen, and learn our football program. Over the ma the past weeks, spent many hours at games, practices, traveling, walking the 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 building late and early, uh, watching our student athletes on campus watching our coaches on campus and in the community. One aspect of that observation was to specifically watch Coach Key, uh, watch how he operated our football program. And in doing that, I found a leader, a leader who pays close attention to the details, someone who organizes the program and its activities in a highly effective and efficient way in keeping with many of those coaches who under, under who he trained. I found somebody that uniquely understands Georgia Tech, its traditions, its opportunities, and the characteristics of, of, that will make young men successful here on the flats. I found a leader who understands the city of Atlanta and how to succe be successful in recruiting that city and its student athletes. I also saw someone who maintained their pose through adversity. And I saw somebody, a true leader, that has a passion for Georgia Tech. It was incredibly important to me to find the right man to lead this program. There was strong interest from across the country, and as the president mentioned, we conducted an, an exhaustive, disciplined national search. At the beginning and at the end of this search, it was clear that Brent Key was the right person to lead our football program. In addition to watching Coach Key observed a team that responded to his leadership. They demonstrated hard work in their preparation hard work and how hard they played during games, how they conducted themselves off the field, and how much they cared about each other and about Georgia Tech. During the process, we spoke with team leaders and the leadership council. It was important to them that we found a coach with a winning mentality, high character, someone who demanded res responsibility and respect from all members of the team and, and members of the program. Brent showed all those things and leads with this authentically. We also wanted somebody with a clear vision of how we'll lead our football program to the next level. Brent clearly expressed that vision through the interview process. Finally, I wanted someone who works and cares as much about these young men as they care about him. I think I can tell you, after each of our wins at Virginia Tech and UNC, but also after our losses to Miami, 
and Georgia, I went into the locker room and it was crystal clear during those moments, both in celebration and during the agony of defeat, just how much our student athletes respected Coach Key, cared about him, and cared about each other. So with that, I'm proud and honored to introduce the 21st head coach in Georgia Tech football history, Mr. Brent Key. Getting into this. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely not an O lineman number. <laughs> You're good. Thank you, Coach. Coach. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Congratulations. Thank you. So I'm up. You're up. All right. Uh, you know, honored, humbled. Uh, can't say enough about sitting here and, and, and being the being head football coach at Georgia Tech. Uh, you know, the the, the enthusiasm of the fans and the energy of the fan base and the alumni, uh, our team, it, it's, it's been unbelievable. Uh, I can't thank you guys all enough. Uh, and, and, and I wouldn't be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be sitting here if I uh, didn't thank Dr. Cabrera, uh, Jay, everyone involved in this process, uh, and the GTA Board of Trustees. You know, thank you, thank you for giving, these, giving me this opportunity. Um, we got my family here, uh, Danielle, Harper, my mom, uh, my in-laws. They're good, though. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> my high school football coaches, uh, Coach Jack Wood and Coach Tony Pugh, drove over from Birmingham. Uh, you know, thank you all. I can't tell you how much this means that you're here and how much impact you all had 30 years ago. Tony, you kicked the crap out of me now. <laughs> he was my line coach, D-line coach. Uh, and, and Coach Wood, you're one of two men I'll never call by their first name. That's the respect I have in, 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 in the word coach. And thank you. Thank you for the lessons. Thank you for everything. Now that Auburn blood in y'all too. That, that, we're gonna get that out real fast. <laughs> so, I, I coached in Tus for my whole career. Coach Wood has written me notes. He still writes writes notes to everybody. Good luck. Can't wait to watch you this year. You know all the you know such just thought out notes. Well, then I go to Tuscaloosa, and I get that note. I hope your team stays healthy, <laughs> and you have all the success that you want. Coach Wood, no good luck, nothing. There was nothing in it. And I asked him one day, he goes, you gosh darn right, I'm not going to wish luck to this team. So, but uh, tell it like it is. Uh, you know, as I'm sitting here right now, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not sitting here alone. I'm not sitting here with just uh, with, with Jay and Dr. Cabrera. I'm sitting here with everybody that's ever played football at Georgia Tech, everyone that's ever worn the GT on the side of their helmet, everyone that's ever put the jersey on. Uh, this is for all of us. This is for all of us, and we're all in this together. It's for all the guys that play on the team right now. It's for all the guys that will play on the team in the future, that we'll be recruiting and that we will have here in the future. This is for all of us, and we're all in this. We're all involved. You know, we talk about ownership on our team. This is ownership with all of us. And as I sit up here right now, this is, this is, this is for all of us, guys. And I appreciate you all, and it's going to be a heck of a ride. It really is. Um, you know, to all the, the, the fans, supporters, boosters, everyone out there, everyone that loves Georgia Tech football, I want everyone to understand we need a lot of positive energy. We need a lot of enthusiasm. We need everybody involved to build this into the best football team in the ACC. You know, we're working to be a champion, and that's what we're going to do on and off the field. Everyone has to take ownership in this. It's not just us as coaches. It's not just us as a football team. This is everyone. This is the, all the fans, all the alumni, boosters, everybody. We need everybody involved in this. You know, I want everyone to be involved in our pursuit of being a championship football team. That is our goal, to wake up every morning and become champions. Uh, there, there, there's a standard of excellence that we'll work towards every single day. And for us to reach that standard and for us to reach where we want to be, it's going to take all of us. And you guys are all along for this ride. All right. Uh, you know, our, goal, uh, our goal is to build a program that you guys are all proud of, you know, proud on the field. Uh, proud off the field and proud in the classroom, and that's what we'll do. That's what we'll work every day to do. Uh, our mission when we're, you know, developing our players, you know, what we, 
what we will do, there's three things. Number one, we want to make sure these young men are better when they leave Georgia Tech than when they got here. Number two, we want to make sure that they earn that Georgia Tech degree in the major that they want, not a major they're told to be in, but in a major that they want and that they desire that they earn that Georgia Tech degree. And number three, we, were, we will make these guys and we will develop them into becoming the best football players they possibly can to reach their full potential as an individual player, to learn how to play as a team, and learn what it takes and what it means to win. Because that's why we're in this business of football. It's for the kids, it's to graduate them, and it's to win football games. And that's what we will do. Every decision I make as the head football coach will be based on two things. Number one, what is the best interest of our players? Number two, what is the best interest of Georgia Tech? We will do nothing as an organization, as an entire team, that does not take those two things into account. What's best for our players on our team and what's best for Georgia Tech? And we will do nothing to embarrass Georgia Tech. What kind of football team? We want to be a fast, physical, aggressive, attacking football team. We will be the most disciplined team on the field every week we play a football game. We want our players to love playing football and to hate losing football games. And you have to understand the difference in those things. There's a love of winning, but there's a hate of losing. And you have to hate the feeling you have in your gut when you play this game. And that's what we will build and instill in our football team. This will be a team that plays one play at a time. We play for 60 minutes. We play with no scoreboard. We're not worried about results. All we're worried about is how we get there. You know, we, will, we want to be that football team, and we will be that football team that other teams hate to play by the way we play the game, by the physicalness that we play with, by how we play for 60 minutes. We want other teams to hate to play us. They want, I want them to see a GT on their schedule, and they do not want that week to come. We want this in all phases of our program. Offense, defense, special teams, how we cover kicks, how we return, how we block, how we tackle, how we run the football, how we stop the run, how we catch, how we tackle, how we defend plays. Every aspect of our program, this is the mindset that we want to have. And it's easy for me to sit up here and say this, guys, but it's extremely hard to do these things. Winning is hard. Winning is hard in the game of football. Only 50% of the teams do it every week. Can't tie anymore. It's a hard thing to do, right? And it's hard to get there. And it's easy for me to say it. It's easy for you all to listen. We've got a team of men that's going to work to get this done. We're going to work in practice, in season, out of season, conditioning, how we condition our bodies physically, how we condition our minds, the mental conditioning that will take place. The, the mental aspect and approach to the game of football is something I strongly believe in. It's something that our team will believe in. It's something that our team will have. Any and all resources, resources needed to go towards the mental training and the mental health of our players is the utmost important to me. Strength training, what we do in the weight room, how we do things in the weight room, how we build our young men. This is not just a violent sport. This is a collision sport. And we have to protect our young men as they go out there and play. That starts in the weight room, how we build their bodies, how we condition them, how we run them on the field, how they're prepared to go out, not just to play games, but to practice every single day that we put the pads on. Right? That is one of, if not the most important part of this entire football team. We have to, it starts in the weight room. It starts on the field as they're training. Within that weight room is not just pumping iron and lifting weights. There's also the mental part that, goes, that, that takes place in there. There's the mental toughness that's developed in the weight room and on the, on the, uh, on the conditioning field. Those are things that we will start with as soon as we are back from uh, as soon as we're back from uh, Christmas break. Right, that'll start up, and that will be the number one priority for this football team. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about our current team. These guys feed off of the energy of the fans. They feed off the enthusiasm of the fans. No one knows what these players go through. They don't. It, it, to, unless you've walked up the hill, unless you've missed a stinger when you're trying to get to class, uh, you know, got lost over in the middle part of campus. We used to be able to drive through it, but now you have to walk. So <laughs> it's a good thing, guys, because that was just more parking tickets for us. <laughs> <laughs> you've got to uh, you've got to understand what our guys go through, and they feed off of you. They feed off of the of the energy. They feed off of the fans. They feed off of people in Bobby Dodd Stadium. 
Right? We need that. These players need that. It's important to them. It helps them go. It helps fuel them. They understand, and they're extremely, extremely excited about the commitment to Georgia Tech football. Hey, Hart. It, 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 the, the, the excitement in their in their faces right now, you know, the, to to know the the Georgia Tech families behind them, the the Georgia Tech families united and, and wants to see them succeed, and the commitment is there from Dr. Cabrera and from Jay for these guys to have success. These guys love playing football here at Georgia Tech. They love being Georgia Tech students sometimes. <laughs> tell you guys, you guys will all appreciate it a lot more once you get your diploma. It's hard. That's the way we want it. That's the way we like it. But they love this place. I love this place. Continue to support them. Continue to be there for them. Even when things aren't as good, when things aren't the way everyone pictures that they should be, I promise you these guys on this football team are do, e doing everything in their power to get it done the right way. Immediate focus of mine, immediate focus right now is to hire the best staff possible to teach, to coach these young men, and to recruit the best players that fit here at Georgia Tech. And understand when I say fit at Georgia Tech, that's a very, very, very important component to our recruiting. The men we hire will be great teachers. They'll be great recruiters. I will not be in a rush to make these decisions. Bill Walsh said it a long time ago, slow to hire and fast to fire. And that's important because we have to pick the right men to lead our, to lead our young men. Uh, you win with people. You win with the right people in your organization. We've got to get the right people for Georgia Tech. Every area of our program, uh, this day and age, there's a lot of ways to improve your football team. It's through recruiting, it's through the portal. Everyone knows the transfers. Everyone knows all the different ways. Right? But people, what people forget about is how you improve your football team that you have, how you develop the ones you have, because they're the ones that are with you. That's where it starts. It starts with our current football team. Right? to develop those guys the right way, right? to build the team there. You know, our goal is to improve competition in every single position we have. Right? You improve competition, it's not always with the best player that's out there or the best player that you feel like you can acquire. Improving your overall roster really starts at the bottom. You start at the bottom and you work your way to the top. That's how you improve your overall roster. Right? That's not to say that there won't be the top players that you go after. Of course there will. But we're in overall roster improvement. And what does that do? It improves competition on the football field. What does improved competition do? It improves, it, it improves who's on the field. It makes you better. If the starting wide receiver is going against a scout team corner, and that corner is a really good player, well, it's going to make them better. No difference on the offensive line, defensive line, quarterback. So it's overall improvement of our roster that will, that will begin and will continue to go uh, throughout the duration of the time here. All right. I'm a lot better when I get up and I speak from my heart, off cuff. But there was a lot of things I wanted to make sure I covered today. And, and so I had to write some of them down. But there's one thing I want to make sure everyone in this room understands and everyone that's associated with Georgia Tech understands. We have an opponent in this state that we will work 365 days a year to defeat. We will work 365 days a year to dominate. When we all wake up in the morning, our goal is to dominate our opponent. The feeling of dominating your opponent is like no other. And whatever team is on our schedule, that is our goal. That is what we will work towards every single day. Players that are in here understand that. That is our goal, that is our mindset. And we have an opponent in this state that's included in that. For 365 days, we will work to dominate that opponent. Understand that. None of this can be done without the partnership. Dr. Cabrera, Jay, I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, there's a lot of work to be done. We know what the work is to be done. 
uh, and we know how to do it. Uh, and we're prepared to do this together. We're not looking for a quick way. We're not looking for the easy way. We're, we're looking for the Georgia Tech way. And the Georgia Tech way has never been easy. It's never been quick, and we know that. And that's the way we're going to go about this. I promise every fiber in my body will go towards making us a champion. Every single fiber in my body will be directed towards that one objective, and that's dominating our opponent. I'm honored to be here today. Everybody knows I love this place. And we need everybody together, everybody pulling in the same direction. Our family, our Georgia Tech family, all aligned in the same direction with one thing as the common goal, and that's to build a championship football team. I can't thank y'all enough. I promise, I promise everything I have will go, will go towards that. Go Jackets. Go Jackets. Okay, I'm going to open up the floor for uh, questions from the media. If you have a question, please raise your hand, get a microphone. And uh, I know Coach Key knows just about everybody uh, in the room uh, media-wise, but President Cabrera and Jay still learning some names and faces, so if you could introduce yourself and the uh, outlet that you represent, we'd appreciate it. So we'll start right back here with Kelly. Kelly Quinlan, Jackets Online. Um, just for Brent. Can you walk us through the process of how you were interviewed and, and kind of all that? We, we talked a lot about it leading up, but you, you said your focus was on the season. So just kind of can you walk us through the timeline of how you, how you met with Jay and, and how the process proceeded? Yeah, sure. It was uh, probably the only person in the history that had an 11-week interview. And I said a long time ago, and I told these players, that any resume I needed to hand out was those guys. It was the game film. It was the way those guys played. And I left all my faith in that, and that's what I, and, and, that, and that's all I needed. Rod? Rod McKenzie, uh, GoJackets.com, 247 Sports. Uh, Brett, how important was those, those eight weeks as interim coach to uh, number one, learn about your team, and number two, to learn about your staff to make, maybe make your job a little easier moving forward. Yeah, anytime you have uh, have experience and exposure uh, exposure around people, it it makes it doesn't make any job easier. You know, there's nothing easy about the job. Uh, it, it gives you a little bit more information uh, when it comes to making decisions, though. Okay. Ken Segura, the Atlanta Journal Constitution. Uh, Brent, uh, I appreciate your, your remarks. What you, I'm curious about your assessment of the talent level on the team right now. You, you speak of wanting to win championships. Is it close? Is it there? How do you, how, how do you assess that? Yeah, it's like I said, Ken. You, the goal of a head football coach is to constantly improve the overall roster, and, and that's what we will work towards every single day: is improving our roster. Improving the roster is not necessarily always going out and finding someone else. Improving the roster goes, goes through development of the current team. And as I, st as I stated earlier, that is the first priority we have. That's the development of our current team. Right? That is what we will do is develop these guys. We will make them the best players they can possibly be. They will learn how to play as a team and we will teach these guys how to win on a consistent basis. Zach. Coach Zach Klein from Channel 2 here in Atlanta. Congratulations. Um, President Cabrera called you the most competitive person he knows. You says you hate to lose, but you also said you're not worried about results. Uh, for someone who hates to lose and is pretty competitive, why are you not worried about the results? You know, it, it's, it's, a, it's kind of a, I don't know what the exact word is. I'm a, I'm a tech guy. I'm not, a, I'm not an English major or anything. My mom's sitting right there. Now, she was a school teacher. She, she could tell me all the, whatever proper word it is, but, you know, you can't be driven by results. But the unfortunate thing in this profession is that the result on the scoreboard is the way you're judged. You know, so when you understand that, and you understand that judgments come from a scoreboard, but yet we can't be result-driven, right? 
that's the fine line that you have to walk every single day. Right? So you can't worry about what the end result is, even though you're judged upon it. You have to worry about what you can control. You have to worry about how you work every day, how you prepare every day, how you, how you build every day. Right? And if you feel confident in the way you do those things, right, if, the, if the hate of losing, the, every, and I don't know if this is the right thing to say or not, because it, it's, it's a Coach O'Leary thing, you lose you die a little bit inside there's a little part of you that, that just kind of rots away and you, you you have to really you have to hate losing before you can even think about learning out learning how to win and, and that disgust and that that feel you have when when losing takes place that drives you in every other way throughout your life I don't know if I answered your question but yeah. It is what it is. Jeff. <laughs> Jeff Schultz of The Athletic. Brent, following that up, you, you're new to this job, but you're not new to the campus and the, and the program. So what have you seen in the last few years that made you think, you know, I wish we were doing this or I'd like to do this differently or particularly major things that you would like to see improvement in? Yeah, I mean, all areas of the all areas of the program are areas that we look at every single day, and that I look at every single day. I'm responsible for the entire football program. Dr. Cabrera and Jay gave me the you know were, were were gave me the responsibility of the entire program. They entrusted the entire program to me, and all areas of this program will be under constant evaluation. My job is to give these young men that play for our team the best opportunity to go and compete on Saturdays to win football games. That is my job. And every part of the organization will be evaluated and we will take every opportunity to get any to get better in any part of the part of the uh, program that we can. And that's that's personnel, that's uh, you know uh, development, that's you know how we play the game, um, offense, defense, special teams, you know, any any area is is up for uh, you know, review, and you have to look at it that way. You know, you, you when you come into a program, and you know, I've got a little bit of a unique experience experience walking in here because I, I had eight weeks in it as the head coach. I have you know years here, so is that a little bit of an advantage of knowing you know of knowing some things? Yeah, it is. It is an advantage over someone who might walk in the door day one. Uh, but you know, there's there, there's a lot of areas that you know, we will address. There's a lot of areas that already have been addressed. Uh, and I think you'll see in the in the coming, you know, days, weeks, months, exactly where that aim is at. Justin. Hey Brent, Justin Felder, Fox 5 Atlanta. Uh, Jay mentioned that he consulted with leaders on the team in this decision. And I think a lot of people saw the video of you walking into the team meeting room when they got the news and their reaction. What did it mean to you to have that support from your players? And it sounds like players advocating for you to get this job. Yeah, I mean, it, it's their team. We talked about uh, 11 weeks ago, I wanted the players to have ownership in the football team. You know, but, but with, with player ownership comes a tremendous, uh, a tremendous amount of uh, responsibility and you know accountability within it you know but for players to have ownership in their football team and, and to be given that uh, ownership uh, they understand how quickly too it can be taken away from them but you know when, when players have ownership in a, in a, in a program in a team it, it allows that it allows the football team to be driven in a, in, a, in a totally different way and you know those guys understanding they have that ownership and to be able to you know talk to the athletic director uh, it means a lot it means a lot, but it also means the confidence they have in in, in the way the program is going, and confidence they have in, in their own in themselves, in their own team, because they're the ones that have the ownership in it. Right. Uh, Bryce Kuma, 24-7 Sports. This is for Jay and Brent. Um, I know you guys have answered this kind of independ independently, but uh, in the ever-changing landscape of this sport, and today's a really big day, obviously, with the transfer portal opening up, uh, how do you guys feel like and continue to grow Georgia Tech's image uh, to be able to compete in this landscape as it continues to change? I'll just start by simply saying that um, Georgia Tech and Georgia Tech football specifically is in a great place. This is an important day for us and that we've chosen a new leader 
um, and everything regarding Georgia Tech football is going to flow from his personality and his leadership. So our, our spot um, in, the, in the college athletics landscape is strong, and uh, a lot of that is specifically due to Brent's leadership and, and his vision going forward. So I'll, I'll defer the football question to you. Yeah, it's you know, you, the, the, the tradition of the school is, is unmatched. And, you know, but tradition strictly gives you something to talk about. You know, it's it's a new day and age in college football and, and, and how things are done. And like I said earlier, that a lot of that is in the recruiting, the the, the arena of recruiting and uh, roster management. Uh, you know the the transfer portal, this and that. But you know the number one thing when you talk about recruiting, it's 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 the recruiting and the recruiting of your own roster. It's making sure those guys are taken care of. You know whether what whatever other in, in incentives there are out there. Uh, you know, you, you have a choice to make on how you go about doing those things. And when when those when, when presented with those options and choices, you, you you've got to understand that your current roster and your current team is is, is how you, is what you have to take care of first. Because uh, you know, if if you don't have a, a solid foundation, it, it doesn't matter what else is brought in or what else you do. So uh, you know that, that that's my belief. I believe in you know being a program that's gonna that it's gonna take care of their, their of their current players. We're gonna and, and when you go out in the in the world of recruiting, when you go on the road recruiting, you know it, it's when players see how your current team is and they see how your current team is taken care of and they see how your current team uh, uh, feels about everything, I think that's that's the the, attract, the attraction that we need here at Georgia Tech, that we will have here at Georgia Tech uh, moving forward in the way we build our football team. Uh, Garrett Chapman, 92 on the game. Um, offensive philosophy, uh, you don't currently have an offensive coordinator on staff right now. I know Georgia Tech has been known for its unique offensive style in the past. Uh, what sort of identity is Georgia Tech going to have on the offensive side of the football? Yeah. Um, you know, off, off, our offensive identity, uh, I know exactly what the offense should look like. I know exactly what the offense will look like. Uh, it, currently in the process of, of interviewing multiple candidates uh, for those jobs, so I'm not going to get into you know schematic things, X's and O's, anything like that, but I do have a, an exact vision and understanding of what this offense is. And you know, Again, it's not always going out and getting the, shi the shiniest new toy. It's about understanding what your current roster is and understanding what your personnel is and what's the best way to have the, the personnel you currently have all right, to be successful. Kelly. Brent, <clears throat> I was curious just uh, where things stand with the, the staff currently. Uh, obviously, it seems like from looking in the room uh, that a lot of the defensive staff are, are staying around, but just kind of curious what you're looking at in terms of filling out the rest of your staff right now. You going to tweet it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll, make, I'll, I'll make sure I call you and tell you exactly when I know what we're going to do. <laughs> <laughs> you can tweet me too. Um, I think President Cabrera said he'll do, I think he said anything was the word, to help you out. So what are you asking him for? What do you need? Again, this is back to those words that my mother would know a lot better than me. Very like non-boundary words or whatever. I mean, like, what, you want me to say anything? Like, yeah, we're going to get a billion dollars. Like, like Austin Powers. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> no. Well, as you know, it's it's a competitive space, right? Major college football. Are, are there things that this program needs, um, you know, facility-wise, program-wise, that just will help you compete in the competitive landscape that is major D1 college football? Yeah, yeah, all of the above. And, and, and believe me, we wouldn't be sitting here together if there wasn't a, a, a very detailed vision of where we're going, not only as a football program, but an athletics program by the president and athletic director. And I think all three of us share the exact same vision of that. And all three of us will continue to stay in line and in a partnership, to make sure that we execute that plan and that it happens. Okay. Uh, Dr. Cabrera, to follow up on that a little bit. Um, uh, what you had said about you know doing anything to, to, to raise this program uh, to world-class levels, um, there were also reports that um, there were other candidates that you know weren't interested in, in interviewing or, or, or being considered because of the financial packages that were involved and, and offered as, a, as candidates. And I'm curious, how do you square those two ideas? I, I don't need, well, first of all, I'm not going to even acknowledge the premise of the question. We're just not going to share 
the the details of uh, of, uh, of of the search. All I can tell you is um, I don't hire coaches, just like I don't hire uh, physics professors, and I don't hire math professors. I have people who do that. I build a team, and I. Um, I recruited a, a terrific athletic director, and I work with him to provide whatever resources are needed. One of the of the things that really were very attractive of bringing Jay on board, he's not knocking on my door and say, uh, "Boss, I need this, I need that." He comes to my to my office, and we sit down and we think together on how to secure whatever resources will be necessary to be successful. That was the origin, by the way, of the competitive drive program. It was sitting in the room and thinking, you know, what are the ways in which we can get an influx of, uh, of immediate uh, resources and support for the program to send the right message? That's how this idea came about. And as I mentioned earlier, it's now been a, a success. So uh, we'll continue to work that way, to work together, to think, um, together with, as you've heard from uh, Coach Key and from our athletic director, to think, okay, what is it that we need? How can we work together? And I'll be there for them to secure whatever resources that, uh, that we need. In the facility, in maybe uh, a couple of years, I think, I forgot the exact timing, but this facility will be a very different one. And um, got to work with, uh, uh, with our very generous donors and work with the Board of uh, of Regents, Regent uh, Joyner, thank you so much for being here, and the rest to say, okay, how can we do, what is it we can do to make sure we provide the facility that this program needs? So those are just examples, and that's how we will continue to operate, Ken. Time for a couple more. Bryce. Brent, it was really obvious, um, especially after the Duke game, the emotion that you went and showed with the fan base and everything, and I know you have your family here, and some friends and colleagues as well around the room. But uh, can you kind of walk us through when you figured out that you were going to be the guy sharing that with your wife and, and your mom and your family and what that moment was like for you when you knew, hey, interim status is gone. This is, uh, it's, I'm the guy to lead this program. Yeah, it was, uh, I don't remember what day, but it, within about 32 seconds of presenting it to me, I said yes and uh, called Danielle, called my mom. Uh, called a couple of coaches and uh, got to work. A lot of work to be done. I mean, there, there, there's there's no time to sit back and and think about this. I mean, this is this is a job I was given to do and I was entrusted to do. And again, I'm not trying to skate around a question, but it, it, I got to work. I mean, I, I kept working. I never stopped working throughout throughout all this. There's uh, there's a lot of things to get done. You know, our, our current roster, number one thing, you know, you know, hiring the best assistant coaches we can possibly hire, uh, recruiting at a high, high level to be able to go out every single day and work to find the best young men that fit Georgia Tech. Uh, you know, there, there's no time to sit back and think about it. Maybe I will one day. Uh, you know, hopefully I will, but the, the gratification comes in, 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 in the process right now. The gratification comes in, in, in working to give these young men a, a better chance to experience success uh, every Saturday. Anything else? Kelly? Jay, I was curious what you learned from your process. You, you met with some student athletes and talked to pretty much everyone around the program from what we gathered. Um, just kind of what did you learn about what type of investment, where maybe some changes need to be made, and, and kind of what kind of feedback you got in that process? Um, you know, I, I, I think i kind of spoken to that a fair amount, but I, I'll say that, um, you know, in watching the program, watching football program, watching Brent specifically, um, and, and talking to student athletes, we got some very clear feedback about, um, you know, this, this idea that we, this is a place that values a winning mentality, right? And, and that, um, that winning mentality, that expectation, um, someone who's got high character and that character uh, translating into discipline and responsibility and being evenly applied across the program was really important. Um, and, and I think someone that commands that responsibility, I think that was incredibly important and it was very clear for me, um, you know, from the start to the conclusion, 
that Coach Key was the right person for this opportunity. Um, he demonstrated those characteristics of leadership that really resonated with our team and staff um, throughout the year. With that, we'll go ahead and wrap up. Um, we're going to have a couple of student athletes available for media and just on the other side of the lobby for a media that would uh, please like to make your way over there. And just want to say thank you to Dr. Cabrera and Jay and Coach Key for taking the time today. And thank everybody for coming out. <laughs> Thank you.